Welcome to Whitetail Rendezvous Podcast. This is Bruce Hutchin, host and executive producer. Each week, you will hear tips, techniques, strategies, and personal stories from some of the best and funniest whitetail hunters in North America. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you do, tell a friend on social media. If not, tell me and I'll make it better. Thanks for listening, folks. On the next episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, we're going to talk to Brandon Gator. And Brandon hails from West Bend, Wisconsin, but he spends most of his time now in the technology business out in San Francisco. And he travels back and forth to Wisconsin as much as possible to do duck hunting and fishing and, of course, chasing whitetails. Brandon's got a great pedigree. He's got a degree from the University of Wisconsin. And he's also got his master's from there. And what he decided to do while sitting in a tree stand is how can he make the hunting experience easier for everybody? How can I collect data? How can I help people understand what happened in 2015 on October 18th with a moon uh, phase of it was overhead and it was uh, waxing? Yeah, he's that detailed. Hey, he's a technology geek. Anyway, all said and done, at the end of the day, uh, Quiver Hunting App was born. And Quiver Hunting App is for you and for me to log everything that happens when we're up in a tree, in a ground blind, or wherever we happen to be chasing whitetails. And it gives us data that we can go back and mine. So all that being said, stay tuned. Great show. And I'm really happy to have Brandon part of the Whitetail Rendezvous family. Hey, folks. I'm uh, heading to San Francisco. No, I lied. I'm heading to West Bend, Wisconsin. (laughs) But I'm with Brandon Gador. And Brandon is the owner, operator, creator of Quiver Hunting App. Brandon, welcome to the show. Thanks, Bruce. Happy to be here. Hey, folks. We've had a great warm-up. And and my bad again. I should have had, I should have been recording the whole thing, but um, that's the way it is. But where would Brandon, because he's a Midwest guy that ended up in San Francisco. So that's really where we're going to start. How did the Midwest guy get to San Francisco? Yeah. So um, I went to school at the University of Wisconsin, Madison and, um, you know, coming out of college, a friend and I started a business and we were doing that for about two years. Um, And ultimately, I mean, that was an amazing learning experience. Uh, learned more probably running that business for two years than I did in actual business school. But uh, ultimately that, that tanked and I was kind of looking for the next opportunity. And then, you know, a job opportunity opened up in San Francisco to continue to work in tech. And it just seemed like a really good learning experience um, on the product management and marketing side. And so I took the leap of faith and uh, moved out to San Francisco, not really knowing what I was getting myself into. Um, San Francisco wasn't on the radar to start with. But, um, but I thought, you know, heck, I can get out of Wisconsin for a little bit and check it out. And so it, we were talking, um, how's the hunting environment in uh, San Francisco? Uh, pretty non-existent. Um, there's, uh, <laughs> a, there's not a lot of hunt, hunters in the city. And so um, actually a funny story. I um, This last fall, I was preparing for my elk hunt. And so driving around, there's actually an archery range in Golden Gate Park. And so there's a lot of target shooters that shoot um, archery in the park, but it's primarily just, um, you know, recurve bow. But there's a few compound guys that go in there to practice, and you can tell they're the hunters. But um, while I'm driving there, I usually have my elk calls in, and I'm practicing my calls in the car. And um, I was at a stoplight, and all of a sudden this woman next to me rolls down her window, and she goes, excuse me, sir, is there a dog dying in your car? And uh, I was like, no, that's just me practicing my elk calls right now. Sorry about that. But, um, you know, there's there's really not a lot of hunters and there. Um, I would say most people when they find out about it are pretty curious about it just because they've never really been exposed to it before. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. And I've got a friend. I'm going to give Sam Ayers a shout out. Living country in the city. He lives in Hollywood and Vine. I mean, almost literally there. And, and he just got off his first elk hunt ever. And, um, you know, he, he says all the time it's so hard and one thing he shared with me is that you know venison uh, your elk or deer is the original organic food with all the people you know in in these quote-unquote trendy places say well i eat organic you know i 
gluten free. I'm this and I'm that. They just said, well, you know, what's up with you? He says, well, I'm almost entirely organic. Well, mm-hmm. really? Yeah. And I eat meat. He's not a big, in, obviously. And then he goes, yeah, I'm organic. And he said, they said, oh, really? Yeah. I eat medicine and, uh, and then yeah. they just deer in the headlights after that. Yeah. It's, um, you know, um, you know, one of the guys that I read, read a lot and follow Stephen Ranilla, he, he has a saying around venison diplomacy. And, um, I've really found that in the city, actually, like, um, if people are curious or they want to learn more about it, um, you know, I'll bring a pound of elk burger or something to work and give it to them, um, or other friends in the city that haven't tried it, um, just to open their eyes around hunting and, you know, sharing, you know, kind of the harvest that way. But, um, I've had some pretty interesting conversations in the lunchroom at work when, you know, I bring my lunch and maybe it's like, you know, a venison chili or a stew of some sort. And, you know, someone's asking me like, oh. What do you got today? I'm like, oh, chili. And they're like, oh, is it like, you know, hamburger? I'm like, I actually, no, this uh, this would be elk meat. And then that just opens up to a, a whole different type of conversation. So it, it definitely keeps it interesting. Yeah, I can I can appreciate that. That's for dang sure. Since you mentioned elk, um, what about elk hunting? What state do you go in and why do you find that so alluring? Yeah, so um, you know, I, I grew up my tail hunting with my dad and um, you know, kind of all the primarily the only type of hunting I was exposed to was, you know, sitting in the tree stand and, and, um, kind of setting up for, you know, a white tail to walk by, but, you know, I've always loved the mountains, um, have spent a lot of time, you know, skiing, backpacking and hiking in the mountains. And so elk hunting always had this allure of, you know, where these elk live. Um, and as a kid, I remember my dad leaving for elk hunting trips and that being something I've always wanted to do. And so, when I moved out West, I finally started to make some money and before I could never afford to really go elk hunting, but I started to save up. And so five years ago, we went on our first elk hunt, my dad and I, um, and immediately after that first morning, I was like, this is something I got to do every year. Uh, just hook, just, you know, there's nothing like hiking around on the mountain, you know, trying to find elk. And, um, it just kind of combines all the things that I love. Um, and it's just such an incredible workout as well. So you know, five years ago I started and we, we started in Colorado, just outside of Meeker. And the first three years were rifle hunts. And then the last, last two years were archery hunts. And so we started out as rifle, but I knew right away that I always wanted to get out there in September, um, with the bow. And so we were working towards that. Um, so every year we've been around Meeker, except for last year we didn't draw and we actually were down in, um, uh, the Durango area. But there's a unit up by Meeker that we went in this last year that is, you know, needs about one preference point um, in the White River National Forest. And so we didn't draw that last year. So we went down to, you know, an over-the-counter unit outside of Durango. But then we were back up in the White River National Forest this past year in September. Yeah, folks. And it, for those who don't know, uh, White River National Forest has the largest elk herd in basically the world. I mean, it's thousands and thousands thousands of elk and and white rivers is is huge um you know it's a huge national uh forest that's available to you and i yeah does it get crowded yeah within one mile of the trailhead maybe two Mm -hmm. after that uh you're on your own and uh that's why i like it i i hunted uh unit 42 this year saw some elk one of our friends uh justin johnson committed outdoors took a very nice six point bull but um there's nothing like hearing uh, an elk bugle, in, in my opinion. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. And like uh, last year, some some was funky with the rut last year, and just the elk weren't talking much. And so I was, you know, a little bum coming out of last season just because I didn't hear that many bugles. But this year, it was just unbelievable. And like, you know, <laughs> there's that quote from Mike Tyson: "Like everyone has a plan until I punch them." Um, and, <laughs> Uh, same is true when you wake up in the morning of elk hunting, you, you try to put a plan together, but as soon as you hear that first bugle, you're off to the races, um, to try and, uh, to try and find that critter. But to your other, to, to follow up on that too, we had some really good encounters this past year. Um, you know, one where, uh, my, we had, call, we were calling in and, um, basically my dad had brought in this six by six, about 40 yards from him. And I could see it in my, it's like one of those classic stories where you just start to see the antlers rise up over the ridge before you see the actual bull. Um, 
And this bull got like within 40 yards of my dad and then just ripped this massive bugle at him. And, and then the wind had shifted. So he started trotting the other way, but my heart was pounding so hard that I couldn't tell if that was the elk running or if that was my heart. Uh, <laughs> so amazing. It is. And, and folks, um, I know a lot of people who hunt whitetails, especially archers. I've come to Colorado. That's, that's how I got, you know, my first hunt was a while ago. And, um, you know, every time we got into elk, and, but the, it's just the experience. And I, I hunt for myself. I don't team hunt. Maybe should, but that's how I like to do it. And, um, you know, it's just an amazing, amazing uh, experience, adventure uh, to have a bull elk within, you know, 40 yards and screaming at you. I mean, just mm-hmm. you can't believe the primal <laughs> scream. <laughs> and it, uh, it gets your attention. Totally. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's what I tell my friends, too. It's like, you know, they're like, oh, I, w- I want to go, but it just costs too much money. And I'm like, listen, if you just put away a certain amount of dollars every month and just slowly build up that kitty fund, you'll be able to go. And that's what I do. Like, I, it is, um, you know, we do, we don't, um, um, it, you know, the prices change every year and the out-of-state tag is expensive. But if you save up for it throughout the year, it's, it's definitely a very doable hunt. Um, well said on that. Let's switch it back now to to quiver uh, hunting app, and uh, we're going to talk about whitetail hunting, uh, folks. And uh, but right now, you know, I, I want to talk about the the app because it's it's very interesting. Uh, all the technology that's available, and yes, there's a lot of app, other apps out there. My good friends run Hunt Data, and it's and it's maps and pins and all the capability. I use it sheep hunting, and it was a great tool. And that's what I want people to hear from you about the tools available, specifically hunting, uh, quiver hunting app uh, today, because uh, if you're not embracing technology, folks, um, you auto. Yeah. And, um, and you kind of hit the nail on the head there as far as, you know, building a tool. And so, um, you know, I mentioned earlier that I have, a, you know, these jobs that I moved out to San Francisco for. And so, but I've always had this itch around trying to build a product for, um, you know, for the outdoorsman, whether it be hunting and fishing. And so in previous years, I built, you know, let's say social networks or pseudo social networks for hunters or fishermen. And those didn't really pan out because, well, there's some already really great social networks out there. And it's really tough to start one of those, you know, from the beginning. But when I was thinking about what I wanted to build for a mobile app, um, we really wanted to focus on building something that was a utility to hunters, something that, you know, that would become useful for them and that would help them with their hunt and so um you know really that's what quiver is and so i'm I'm, i run and bike a lot as well and i use apps like strava or map my run and i was sitting there i was like huh it would be kind of interesting if we had a similar tool that allowed a user to you know easily track their hunts um so that they could just kind of build up a story or a timeline of their season um, and then we started to riff on that idea some more around what other types of information would be useful, um, knowing that, you know, already the really hardcore hunters are already taking notes out there. Um, if you, you know, read any kind of blog posts out there or, um, you know, you know, really study whitetail hunting or even elk hunting, a lot of the guys will say, you know, the diligent note takers and the ones that can go back and, you know, reference those notes over the years are the ones that are more and more successful each year. And so really what this is transitioned into or, you know, transformed into is a mobile hunting journal where um, you can fire up the app and it allows you to track your hunt. And so there's kind of three pieces to the to the app. So um, the first part is, is it, it functions like a weather app, but the weather information that we give you is specific to hunters. And so on the home screens, you'll see, you know, wind speed, wind direction, sunrise, sunset. Uh, barometric pressure, um, and the current weather. And you can add different locations as your home screens. And so that way, like, you know, let's say you're trying to plan a hunt for that night. You want to, you know, your different stand locations and what hunt, what wind directions are the best. You can quickly open up the app and, and slide through the different home screens and, and get a quick gauge on, okay, where, where's the best spot for me to go tonight? Um, so that's kind of like on the surface around just like the weather data. But then um, on the tracking side, basically, you just like you would track a run, and this is kind of where the inspiration came from, from the app like Strava, which is a running app, but you start tracking your hunt. And so once you get up in your stand or you're in your blind, 
Um, and this app is really geared towards whitetail hunters uh, because it's more of the, the hunter that's um, not going to be moving around a ton in the mountains or anything, but more towards, you know, whitetail guys. But you start tracking your hunt and basically it starts a timer. And then from there, we make it really easy to log different events that happen throughout your hunt. So you can log different deer sightings, whether that's a doe or a buck. You can take notes in the app. You can add a photo. Um, you can record when shots are taken. Um, and really, while this while you're tracking the hunt, then it's building a timeline of your hunt. And so you can see when you started, so you get a good idea of when you were out there. Um, and then at the different times when you've recorded activity. Um, and then, you know, you, once you're done, you, you end the, hunt, you end the hunt in the app. And so then you have like a completed view of what that hunt was. And the interesting thing there is then you can go back and review and you can see, okay, you know, last week I hunted this stand. I went out at three 30. We had a West wind coming in at five miles an hour and the deer started moving at about five fifteen. And so you create a real nice timeline of all these individual hunts that allow you to go back and analyze so that you can, you know, as we say, hunt smarter um, in future sets. You know, you think about that, I'm, I'm listening to you. So does your weather portion give you a uh, forecast? Like hunt, everybody knows you hunt the front end and the back end of a, of, a, of a cold front coming through or any delta that's 10, 20, I shouldn't say 10, but, you know, 20 degrees difference, you know, Barometric pressure drops. Yep. And now, now we got a front moving through rain, snow. It doesn't really matter. It's it's the it's the in my opinion, it's the delta uh, between temperature and then the barometric pressure that keys them. That's that's yep. my opinion, folks. Totally. Um, and we don't do any um, future reporting right now. That's something we would want to bring into the app where we give you more data in the future so that you could start to see those trends happening. Um, but what we do do is um, or what we have seen is that like um, exact evidence of what you're saying there, Bruce, around these deltas. And so um, one thing that's pretty neat and something that we want to, um, you know, expand on in the future is taking, you know, the data that we're collecting in aggregate. You know, it's an important part that for users to know that all their data, everything is very private. We don't share that with anybody and we only look at it in aggregate. And so we'll be able to like, go back and measure, okay, we know a cold front moved through on this week. Um, you know, we had, you know, a dropping barometer heading into the storm and then it was rising afterwards. And then we look at actual activity logged in the app to support these types of theories out there. Um, and we have an interesting blog post that does actually um, support that notion around these changing weather conditions where we look at the average deer seen per hunt um, leading into the storm front. And then the post four days after the storm, after the storm, and we see about a 60% increase in the actual, the average amount of deer seen per hunt. Um, and it's just neat to be able to back up um, these types of, you know, I'm going to say theories that we have around why deer move with the actual data that we're seeing in the app. Yeah. And folks, uh, this is getting back to a tool, you know, forget about the technology uh, but it's really a tool to help you become a better hunter on your 40, 180, whatever you have, um, you know, acres. And I know everybody knows the tree stand, knows the best wind, knows all that. But how many out there actually keep the journal and say, hey, as as Brandon said, went into the stand at 315, the deer were moving at five o'clock, the moon was underfoot, overhead. I mean, you start throwing all this stuff in there and it's hard to remember. Right. it's just like fishing and i used to fish a lot but i could tell from the tides and the moon and all that stuff and i had a journal and i'd say and and here's the solar times and boom you know we would hit fish exact not exactly but within a couple of minutes of, exactly. of all that data yeah exactly and that's i mean we really wanted to just create a really simple tool and um you know, it's not like some soup up technology piece, really. It's like I said, it's it's basically a journaling app where you can log your hunts and then log the different activity. But then we pull in all the weather information for you so that it's all right there in one app. Now, what does it cost? That's free right now. OK, it's free. So are you selling advertising? What's your business model for for cash flow in this sucker? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, we there's a different th uh, a few different um, avenues that we want to test out. Um, you know, initially, 
um, we basically um, we built this product as an MVP, which is a minimum viable product. Like um, we wanted to understand, you know, the problem or the use case that we're building for is that something that users would want to use, and so. Um, that's kind of the leap of faith you have to take with any new business idea or new product you want to put out there is like understanding, are we actually solving a problem? And so with this app, we, in order to answer that first question around, is this something that users are going to use? Um, we wanted it to be free to at least start to collect that information. Um, and so we're coming into our third season, um, third, se third hunting season this year, and we've tracked over 25,000 hunts. Um, you know, we have a four and a half star rating in the app store and we get a ton of amazing feedback from users. And so I think we can say that, yes, we've answered that first question around, will people use it? And um, is it a tool that they'll find useful? Um, and so the, the next questions we need to try and answer, are, okay, how do we um, uh, you know, actually support this as a business? Because right now it's been completely bootstrapped um, and you know, it's uh, been you know, an investment over time to build it. But there's a couple different, um, a couple different ways we're going to try and solve that. So one is um, an idea we want to test out this year is um, a freemium model where the app is still free, but users can sign up for paid features. And so one thing we're thinking about around testing is, you know, would users be interested in receiving alerts around alerts specific to them, specific to their geo around potentially when are good times to hunt? And so knowing that we're seeing a weather padding come in knowing that we've seen um, hunters in that area, you know, starting to um, log more activity in their hunts, would they want to get an alert around that? Would they pay for a feature like that? We don't know, but that's, you know, one hypothesis we have and something we want to test. The other, the other angle is, you know, through sponsorships. And so um, it, for anyone that's used the app or if you've checked it out, Bruce, you know, the imagery in it and the design of it, um, it was really important to us. And we wanted to really build a beautiful app that was easy to use. And so if you go in there, you'll see some amazing um, imagery and home screen shots. And so um, this season, actually, we're working with uh, Legendary Whitetails, which, um, you know, AJ, and that's, you know, how we yeah. got it. Um, so we're going to feature um, Legendary Whitetails imagery in the app this year. And so that um, when a user, because the, the one thing we, we didn't want to do is put in the really annoying ads or pop up ads that people see in apps because that just kills the user experience and it's just annoying to the user. And so um, we wanted to weave in a brand's content so that it was seamless um, into the experience and not intrusive. And so you'll see this season um, and very shortly we should be rolling it out with legendary whitetails content. Um, and it's a way for them, you know, for them to extend their brand and so they can reach hunters in the tree stand. And, you know, for us, it's a way to, you know, support future development. That's good. Do you want to share your screen right now? Just go to the bottom and get the app up. Can you do that on your laptop? Um, you know, we didn't laptop. talk about. Yeah, you know, we didn't talk about that. My bad. No, no worries. But um, how about on your phone? Just turn your smartphone and hold it up. Yeah, yeah. Let me do that real quick. Um, we should have set this up, folks. My bad. No worries, Bruce. One question is though: is where did I put my? I don't know where I put my cell phone. Okay, in the bedroom, <laughs> in the truck. Yeah, one second. All right. Now, folks, if you don't know uh, AJ Gall, he's at Legendary Whitetails. He, he heads up their community uh, division. He runs their blog. He's got a great, um, well, right now, uh, you know, rut forecast for 2017. You know, that's up there. And if you go to Legendary Whitetails, I think. Uh, dot com uh, forward slash community you're going to find aj and just check him out he's a heck of a guy he's been on the show a couple of times he did some uh specific things for me last year regarding the rut um and we did an ebook with him so good people and and check out legendary whitetail they're you know wisconsin based and homegrown and you know uh all sorts of lifestyle living you know living in the whitetail uh, lifestyle with clothing and all everything else combined so there you go aj yeah and actually uh some exciting stuff we've done with with aj is using our data um they have a data driven rut post where we look at our at our data 
looking kind of at those same metrics around average deer seen and trying to see how that changes throughout the month of October into November and December. And um, we make basically using last year's data, we talk about, um, you know, based, based on our data, when did those average years spike and then put predictions out there for each state. And so that's another kind of collaboration piece that we work on with them using our data. All right, so um, I can share some screenshots of the app here real quick. Now, is that coming through all right, Bruce? Yeah, right, just like that. Jackson, yep. uh, Wisconsin, and then there's some glare in the bottom. Back it up. Yeah, there you go. Yep. That's better. So, so here's showing my current location, but then you could add other locations in the app. And so these are just like some dummy locations I've added, but um you know if you had different stands and kind of different parts of the area that you hunt you could throw this in there and see the different wind um and uh, moon phases there so like here's just kind of and this just works like a, a weather app here where you can just go across your different locations and so you know what we're working on with legendary whitetails is you can see the imagery in the back here um we're going to bring some of their content in and then some of their images um so that you know the, we can extend the legendary whitetails brand in the app but that way it doesn't feel like an intrusive ad within the experience. Okay, then, so I hit start hunt. Yep, and so last last spring we added turkey hunts, and so you can track whitetail hunts or or you can track deer hunts or turkey hunts. But actually, um, we have this we have folks are using this app for all sorts of reasons. You know, pig hunts. We have a lot of fishermen using this app actually um, for their fishing, and we've been asked a lot to build a very similar app for fishing and kind of build out that capability which we'd love to do. It's just, you know, we're a little tight on resources. So we're, we're just focusing on whitetails right now. Um, but then, yes, yeah, so I go here. I'm going to choose where I am. Pick your location. You can name the hunt. Um, and then basically from there, you start the hunt. And so you see the key weather data up at the top around current conditions, sunrise, sunset, which is super helpful when you're worried about shooting times, uh, moon phase, and then barometric pressure. And then from there, um, you know, we basically, um, these are all the different events that you can track in the app, um, deer scene. So like if there's a buck or a doe, um, you know, photo shot, taking notes, and then if you're lucky enough, you're down. And so, all, you know, user can go in and pop in and, and add this content throughout their hunt and then basically build out a timeline. And so let's just log, a, you know, a log that we saw a buck quick. Um, and then that gets added and it just creates this timeline that I was talking about of your entire, your entire hunt. And then if I go here and I'm going to just end the hunt, um, you see a summary. So like you'll see, um, what's neat about it is you can see a summary of like your entire season. How many, how many hunts have you done so far? How many hours have you been out there? How many deer have you seen? And you can slice and dice that by the year. And so, you know, it's interesting for guys to be able to go back and see how much time they actually spent in the stand this past season um, and compare that to last season. And then all the previous hunts are in here down below. So you can tap into one of those and see what happened there. So that's, that's kind of the, the, the nuts and bolts of the app. Now, do you have GPS? Yeah. It's so we have integrated. Uh, it's integrated in the sense of when you first, um, when you track, when you log your hunt, it automatically pulls in the location so it knows where that hunt is. Um, right now, we don't have anything built out, out around mapping so that you can't, you know, drill into a map and kind of drop points or anything like that. Not yet. Okay. So that would be, you know, there's people all over the country. I think Scout Outlook, I, I'm thinking that there's a number of apps. That might be yep. a worthwhile conversation. Yeah. You know, they use yours and you use theirs and, you know, you increase your database for, very limited cost. Totally. And then, you know, the thing is like, um, um, you know, like HuntStand and some of the apps, other apps out there are really focused on kind of the property management around like, you know, where your different stands on your property, really using the map and kind of drawing those lines out where ours is much more like just a journaling app. Like it just focuses on, um, allows you to collect your data for that, your, your different hunts that you have. Um, so you can kind of build that database of your own hunts, just like you were saying earlier you know, as you're keeping notes of it over time. Yeah. And let's get back to that. Uh, I call it data mining. You might have a different term, but when you think about all the data you're collecting, 
but Bruce's data been hunting for a while. So, you know, I've got a couple hundred entries, right? Yeah. So then you can go back. I'm thinking of, of you know, money thing. You can go back and, and, and coordinate or uh, that's the word I'm trying to think. Anyway, pull it all together. And then you can say, Bruce, you know, here's here's the report. Does that cost five dollars or a dollar? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I I don't know. But you know, you think about that, then all of a sudden your year end report, your 2017 hunt report. And you know, all of a sudden you've given them really good data, which they're gonna pay for. Yeah. The app's free, then all of a sudden you throw that in a notebook or you put it on the computer somehow. You could build you could build a separate thing for Bruce. So if Bruce just goes in there to his file, clicks on Bruce, and there's all the data from the year and then a summation of it. So all of a sudden, I kind of sort of know, wow, this Tuesday, that Friday, that Sunday, that Saturday, what were the conditions? Exactly. I saw the most bucks, you know, and we hierarchy, okay, the most deer activity. Yep. Because, like, I shoot those, so I don't really care. I yeah. do care, but. You know, I, I, I shoot them all. And I, but you take that in most deer scene and then you can split it out bucks and does. But then I can look at it, a snapshot. I can look at it really close and go, why were those five days the best days of the whole season? I had right. 20 days, but I had five prime time days. Exactly. So you look at the data and barometric pressure and wind and sun and not sun or whatever, but you pull all that together, that's going to make me a better hunter i think and folks i'd like to hear your input and um brandon what's your email address or how do i get a hold of you to give some input yeah they, i mean it's just uh brandon my first name b-r-a-n-d-o-n and then at quiverapp.co all right mm-hmm. and i appreciate that i'm here at whitetail rendezvous at gmail.com um i think most people know that but anyway so we'd like to hear from you because um folks you know, way back when I used to work in Mountain View, blah, 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 blah. And I, I know a little bit, just a teeny, 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 teeny inch, but data correlated and pulled together and then given out. The company I work for, we made a lot of money doing that. I mean, yeah. seven figures type of money because people wanted to know when people came to the store, how much they bought, ethnicity. Um, everything they could, they'd suck it all in and they'd see their peak hours and then they could do their campaigns just like AJ Gall over at Legendary Whitetail. Um, You know, after a while, they'll be saying, oh, this is what happened and we see a spike here and blah, 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 blah. But that's what it's about to become a smart hunter, become a 365 day hunter. Just throw the data in, don't worry about it until January to plan for next year in January, February, March. That's my two cents. Your thoughts? No, I mean, I couldn't agree more. Um, and like, you know, it's very, I would relate it to like what um, John is doing over at Deer Lab, where around trail cam photos, you right. know, a guy is putting their trail cam photos, but then his product is giving you all these insights into, um, you know, when these deer are moving and what the conditions are there. It's very similar on our side around your actual hunts, like when you're actually out there and what you're seeing. Um, and so I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I know, um, you know, you always think that you're going to remember stuff when you're out and you're like, okay, I remember that those, those popped out of the Southeast corner of that cornfield at five fifteen. Um, but ultimately you, there's so much stuff running around in your head, you forget that. And so this is a way to just easily log that in your phone and then it's stored there for you. Um, so that you can always go back and reference it. So I would totally agree. Uh, Deer Lab, John Livingston out of Florida. He's really got a really good system, tool, if you will, to take all your trail cameras and um, correlate them and then give you back the information. Exactly. That's good stuff. Let's talk about, uh, we got a few minutes left. Let's talk about whitetail hunt. You know, you're a Wisconsin boy, dad's a hunter. Let's talk about that whitetail tra- uh, hunting tradition. Yeah, so um, I'm uh, I'm actually back in Wisconsin right now. You know, I you know as you mentioned, Bruce, I live in San Francisco right now, but I'm back for a little over a week here. Um, conveniently, I had two buddies getting married, and so I stretched that week out. 
uh, between the, the two weekends to stay back and get, get out and do some whitetail hunting. So, um, last year, uh, my mom's birthday is right around the rut. And so I was back home during that time. Um, and so I try to make trips back whenever I can to, um, get out in the whitetail woods and get that fixed. And so this week I've been able to get out, um, in the stand, um, for some, some early bow action. Now it's just a public land or DIY, uh, that's land or in Wisconsin, it's all private. Um, you know, there's, I'm, I might try and get out into some public in the area around here later this week, but for right now I'm focused on some private land. Um, but actually, um, heading back to California next week, and then I'll be getting out hopefully for some blacktail, um, on some public land out there. So, you know, what's the lure of whitetail hunting? I mean, you're from Wisconsin. I I get that, but, you know, talk about the tradition that your father's passed down. You know, it's just the campfire stories, right? It's just, you know, um, I, I live vicariously, um, all year round for my buddies that live back here still, but it, um, the text messages definitely pick up during the fall when deer season's picking up and it's just, um, it's a chess match out there. And so all, you know, all my different buddies have their different pieces of property that they're, you know, that they've been managing and, um, trying to set up for the season. And it's just a constant chess match with these big mature whitetails, um, and trying to, you know, put the pieces together and put a plan in place and, and make it happen. And so, um, you know, I think, you know, elk hunting is one thing where you're headed out into the mountains and you're hiking and um, that's a totally different ball game where with, with whitetail, it's much more of a chess match. I feel like, um, and it's just something that in Wisconsin is just a, a huge part of the culture um, that, you know, when I'm back home, I just love to get back into it and, and, and talk shop with all the guys back here. Now, does your dad still whitetail hunt? Yep. Yeah, he does. He, I mean, he really enjoys the elk hunting as well. Um, but he, he, for some reason, he loves the late season bow hunt. And so he, um, usually once the snow starts falling and the temps really drop is when he'll start to get out more. I think that also is a factor of the fact that he's quite an addict to golf as well. And so he, he golfs late into the season and then, um, and then he'll pick up the bow, uh, once the temps really start to drop and get out there we're at the point in the show that you can uh give some shout outs i think we've done a pretty good job of that <laughs> giving some people uh shout outs but take time i see you got a first light hat on so people that are you know uh make life interesting for you with with gear or other stuff yeah um i mean i, I love the um the gear that the first light guys put out and i also um a big reason why i'm a big supporter of them too is just what they stand for um <laughs> And it's much more than just their brand, but, you know, the communication and the work they do around conservation and public lands, you know, living in the West, um, the public lands is a big part of the discussion. I mean, that's, that's what's tricky about Wisconsin is that it's so much private land and really here to game around. Who do you know, you know, whose cousin's land can you get on and who do you have access from where, you know, out West, there's just so much, you know, opportunity for hunting on public lands. And first light, I feel like, those guys are um, doing an amazing job as around as you know spreading information and advocacy for public lands um, and making sure that those public lands stay there. And then, really, I mean, like you know, I was introduced to to um, First Light through Stephen Ranella, who I mentioned earlier. But he's a guy that you know I've been I've read his stuff for a long time, and it's exciting to see his show Meat Eater take off. And I think. That is the one of the great intros to hunting that if someone's curious to me about like, because at the end of the day, like, you know, us hunters, it's a pretty small population out there. And, um, you know, I would say the general population is interested in, or curious about hunting. And so um, if they are curious and they want to learn more about it, I'll, I'll generally point them in the direction of Stephen Ranilla and the Meat Eater show that's on Netflix. Um, just as a great way to start to understand, you know, what hunting is. It's not just, you know. Um, you know, what some of the negative kind of perspectives are about it. Like his show really open, can open up the eyes of the viewers on that. Um, and then lastly, I'd say the guys at Legendary Whitetails. Um, you know, AJ's a great guy. Um, he's been a huge supporter of Quiver um, from the beginning. Um, when I kind of initially told him about it, he was excited about the idea. And um, he's given us some great feedback along the way. And, um, you know, this is the first season we're going to actually be working with them 
um, and helping with their brand and getting their brand into the app. And so I'm excited to, to test that out this season and see what it does for them. Well, Brandon, it's been a pure joy, and we covered a lot of different information. And so, folks, again, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, uh, Brandon, how, how do they do that? Um, the best way is through email, Brandon at uh, QuiverApp.co. Um, but you can also hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, you know, Twitter, all the normal spots, and and we'll get back to you. Um, you know, the other thing too is like, um, I want to also just give a shout out to um, my buddy Tim, who's been helping a lot on the marketing side with Quiver, and so he's a guy that you know was interested in what we were doing, um, and he reached out and wanted to help out, and so a big shout out to Tim Salzer. Um, and all the help he's helped with with Quiver in the last two seasons. With that, folks, we're going to wrap this show of Whitetail Rendezvous. And Brandon from Quiver Hunting App, it's been a pure joy. We've had a lot of laughs. We've been smiling most of the time through it. So that's a good thing. Always. Yeah. Hey, Bruce, I just want to say thank you for um, you know inviting me on the show. It was a blast. Um, it was great chatting with you. I want to welcome the newest member to the QDMA family, Quality deer management. In the past, you've heard from Kip uh, Adams, Lindsey Thomas, and others at QDMA, and I wanted to bring in their newest member to help him uh, share with you just what it takes to be a QDMA regional manager. He's in charge of Regional 2, and you'll hear the exact states that that takes care of. And Corey uh, Slater is just one heck of a, a young man who went to, went to school Kent State, then he transferred after he met his uh, girlfriend to Slippery Rock State in, in Pennsylvania. And then he decided after graduation as a teacher coach, um, he wanted to head uh, to Iowa, Leonard Giants. Smart move. No kids, wife, let's move to Iowa. And they did. And uh, that's where he met Bill Winky and spent some time with him and, and learned a heck of a lot from Bill Winky of Midwest Whitetails. And then I moved back to Pennsylvania for family and uh, was checking out Whitetail Properties, actually saw an ad for QDMA. And as they say, the rest is history. So sit back, relax, and you're going to really enjoy Corey Slater from QDMA. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, where you can listen and learn from the experts so you can be more successful on your next hunt. Until next time, listen, learn, and succeed.